the, the context of the, the social and political environment that I operate in and I made a decision to tackle a particular issue that I thought um, was, that, that, that should be discussed. So I'd, had, I'd hope that the film would result anyway in a discussion like this about, about race mm -hmm. uh, and, and more exchanges between communities to understand each other and more exchanges between individuals from different cultures. But uh, did I go looking for a band? <laughs> no way. Because it comes with too much pain and uh, too much criticism that feels unjustified, for which there is sometimes, at least it feels that way, little defense. And it involves a great deal of costs that a small independent film outfit like mine could, could scarcely afford. Thank you, Ken. So the two questions for Hannah and Walter are one, um, how do you balance the, um, the vocal minority versus the majority? And second, when you decide whether to ban or unban or to classify a film, are you deciding, are you trying to gauge what's the feeling of the community or are you giving your own best judgment of what's right? So, um, Walter, why don't you go first? Um, taking the second question first, the, these committees are like a jury. You pick what is representative of the society, and if the only way it works is if the individuals basically said, this is my opinion, rather than pretend that they know what their community, whatever it is, uh, thinks, because you really don't. And what is your community, for goodness sake? Mm. You really don't, unless you've gone around taking a poll. Be, as far as I understand, we're on these committees in our personal capacity, not as representatives of anything mm. else. The idea of these committees is that they are representative of Singapore society. How they pick them, I have no idea. But that's the, that seems to be the theory. So the only way it would work is for the person to say, this is what I believe, and if it turns out you're in the minority, then you must respect what the majority says. Of course, if you feel strongly enough, then you take responsibility, you argue your point, and see if the others can be persuaded. But I don't think we can pretend to represent mm -hmm. anyone else. As for vocal minorities, when it comes to films, if it's not a film that is designed to insult, designed to gratuitously antagonize, then there is a very simple way to deal with it, and that is don't go and see it. <laughs> Boycott the thing, because the fellow wants to make money rather than complain. Right? So if, if it's not gratuitously antagonistic, I would say don't go. Simple as that. Hannah? Um, thanks for the question, actually, because um, since, since being in the FCP and um, this incident happened, I've actually been on a soul, kind of a soul-searching journey of, of, you know, how, rep, how, 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 how comfortable I am actually to hold such a responsibility and, you know, to represent. And I think earlier on, um, I've got a wonderful chairman, by the way, and when I've talked to him about, you know, my, my personal concerns of represented, representing myself as a woman, representing myself as a Muslim, representing myself as a Malay, and how that should play into my personal views. And he said, Hannah, please just focus on what you believe is your own personal beliefs. And I think all of us in the FCP are actually aware of that and conscious of that, although this is what my point earlier, that we have become so racialized that we believe that we are representatives of our own communities. And little or not, it does come into our discussions. And what this case actually brings forth is that um, it's not just an issue for the Indian community or hurt. I'm, I mean, like I told you earlier, when I was watching it, I'm, I'm hurt as well. I think that I can feel that what um, anyone who is of uh, Indian ethnicity could have possibly felt because I, as a human being, I feel that no one should be dis disrespected in that way. And so I think that what I think that this film is actually um, contributing is for us to relook how we see race and how we respect and tolerate one another. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. I think the discussion about who actually speaks for minorities is a fascinating and important one and probably affects the uh, Muslims and Malays as much as uh, Indians. 
um, uh, I do get the sense that there's a sense of overprotectiveness of uh, minority sensibilities in a way that often backfires uh, because it actually perpetuates the stereotypes of minorities as being uh, irrational, prone to riot and whatever. Right? Mm. There's always a fear that we will somehow lose our heads at the you know, mere uh, thought of being insulted. This leads uh, to a question, which, and I'm sorry to tell my good friend Arun that he would actually be my fourth choice on the table, <laughs> because my first choice would actually be the actor who played across uh, Adrian Pang. So I think it's extremely relevant uh, yeah. to know from the producer what, what was going on through his head. Uh, is it that you paid him so well that he was willing to swallow his uh, ethnic pride, uh, or is he just a traitor to his race? Uh, could, I know Arun, you know him, uh, and, I, from, I spoke uh, to him and, and Ken, him. could you tell us uh, what sort of person is right, he? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Charon. Um, I actually <laughs> spoke to Buddy. Okay, uh, he was supposed to be here. I don't know uh, whether he finally showed up. My name is Ingmar Lippert. I'm a fellow here at Tembuso College. Um, I'm intrigued by a phrase which keeps coming up, which is, we can't give details. So I ask myself, are you practicing self-censorship? <laughs> so we, we can't give details. Several people are repeating this, no, no, because and I'm, I'm just interested in, in she has what it means. She has to protect the confidentiality of the deliberations in a panel and in a committee. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's not censorship, no? <laughs> because it's just um, respecting the confidentiality of the discussion. Um, third, third question. Yes? Hi, good evening. My name is Salima, and I'm from Tembusa College as well. Um, I just like to represent the artist community tonight because um, I think we haven't really heard <laughs> from um, artists. So um, I wanted to ask: Do you think that government reactions to art are stifling to the artist community? Because I mean, today we are talking about censorship, but artists actually also face a lot of other problems. For example, more subtle problems like lack of funding. <laughs> Very simple and um, very effective, actually, um, in stifling certain kinds of voices. Um, I just wanted to say that artists are citizens too, and we have a right to say things about the country that we are invested in. And um, unfortunately, it's quite sad, I feel, that um, government only wants to hear some voices over others. Um, this makes artists out to seem like mavericks. It makes us out to sound like the other person, the, the attacker. And um, it's... We have to actually fight to get our voices heard in this side of climate. And um, yeah, and that's the unfortunate thing because like, we actually want to stay here and we actually want to work here, but is the government actually making it very difficult for us? Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, you, you got a lot of applause, obviously. You have a lot of support in this. Yeah, yeah please. Um, one. Hi, good evening. My name is Eugene, and my question is about the censorship process. So over the course of the night, we have heard a lot about how when deciding whether or not to a film, sh how should a film be rated, or whether the film should be passed, uh, a lot of times there seems to be a little bit of a conflict in that perhaps they feel one way as an individual, and yet they are concerned about whether the community might feel differently. So my question uh, to the entire panel really is, uh, is there a better way to ensure that the community's voices are well heard rather than um, risking that it may be simply the opinions of the individuals on the committee? And a uh, second question, which is a bit more trivial, is um, since a lot of the complaints were the result of the film trailer, then uh, why is it that the film trailer wasn't censored but rather other parts of the film ended up being censored instead? Thank you. Uh, a further question to one of the questions posed by the fellows. If... Um, I don't quite buy the, the whole argument that we have to respect the confidentiality um, when what happens in the deliberative process because if I as a private citizen, if I want to view the purpose behind a certain law, I can refer to the hindsight, I can refer to a select committee report, but I can't, as a filmmaker, I can't refer to the deliberative process of the censorship committee. I think, I think that doesn't quite match. Well, sorry, wait, why not? The parliamentary sittings are open to the public, you know, except when it meets in camera. But when the panel meets, it, it meets on a confidential basis. There, there are meetings which are open and meetings which are not open. So why is there a contradiction? Uh, okay, buying that, um, buying that train of thought, wouldn't it be more helpful to future filmmakers and future artists if we could better understand the, the whole deliberative process anyway? But confidentiality serves a purpose in that, that the four, 24 members of the panel feel that they can 
give their all their personal views, no matter how unpopular they may be with the community. And if if everything they say in the panel is then exposed to the 